Hey, good day everyone. Steve here from Langshaw Power. Hope you're doing well today. I just thought I'd do a quick video to show you uh, basically how to hook up uh, the Langshaw Power Victron Multi Plus 2 with the uh, breakout box that uh, we've designed here. So this is uh, going out to a customer. He's going into a 40 foot bus uh, that he's turned into a motorhome. He's got eight by 425 watt Q-cell solar panels on the roof of the coach. They're wired as uh, four banks of two in series. And they're gonna connect into this 150 slash 60, 60 amp charge controller. The inverter he's chosen is the 48 5000, five kVA multi plus inverter. Great piece of gear that. Uh, and he's gonna have four of these Pylon Tech lithium batteries. I've got two here at the 48 volt level just for testing in my test rig. I've got a couple of 24s down there below. I don't know if you can see those. Uh, but I'm just going to give you the run through on how to set this thing up. Um, this one's going to be delivered to the customer. So I've already hardwired the inverter connections for the battery, 240, data. All that is already connected into the breaker box. Um, but if you're interstate or I've got to post it to you, then I can do these with um, plug and play connectors. So basically you'll get two boxes turn up. Everything just plugs together and... You can't get it wrong it's all good um so my breakout box we've got circuit breakers here for everything we've got the main battery circuit breaker so that's going to kill power from the batteries to the entire system we've got a circuit breaker uh, between the main batteries and our charge controller we've got a circuit breaker here for a 48 to 12 volt converter so inside of this box is a 48 to 12 volt converter uh, for all of our 12 volt appliances We've got circuit breakers here for the solar panel connections. Uh, in this case, we've got one, two, three, four strings. Because customer's got eight panels, wide is four banks of two. I've gone as much as a 100 amp controller on this unit with six strings of panels. Um, and that was for a guy who had 12 450 watt longings on his, um, on his mobile home. So you can go pretty big with this. Uh, three safety switches on here. One is shore power in, one is main power out. And the last one's going to go to the aircon system. So uh, he'll be running split system aircon units in his bus. Um, so yeah, so this is all pre-configured. Uh, oh, the other thing inside of here is something called a Serbo GX. That's this unit here. This is the latest version that Victron are doing for their all-in-one communications. It connects with the charge controller, with the inverter, with the sole, uh, gives you a reading of your solar input tells you what the inverters loads are what shore power load might be all that info it's got wi-fi on board so it can connect up to your hotspot dumps all the data to the victron remote portal and then uh, you can access that anywhere online and i can even access it remote log into it make changes if we need to if you've got trouble if you need me to dig in and have a look around see what might be going on because something's not working right we can do all that remotely which is a great unit to have uh, that also works in conjunction with the touchscreen, which is this guy here. It's got a HDMI and a USB connection. The HDMI I've had uh, as far as a five meter extension run off that, but the USB, too much voltage drop over a USB extension. I've actually got one connected here that's one and a half meters long and it's borderline. You'll notice the screen will flicker occasionally. So I've got to shorten that up and um, if you need more than a couple of meters, then I suggest putting in a separate USB power source up where the screen's gonna go, just so that uh, you don't have any flashing screens and weird problems. Uh, the other thing that's going on here, oh, so the, the touch screen's gonna go here. I've already uh, fitted the mounting plate for it. We've got some positions here where we're gonna go through and connect power points. And so um, what I'm using is something called CMS soft wiring. This is one of their power points, double fold power point. If you have a look on the back, there is an in and an out connection. There's no hard wires to do, no screw terminals, nothing for you to uh, have to connect. So you don't need a Sparky to hook this up. It will simply plug in. And so here's one of their leads that you buy. It's got a male and a female end. And uh, you'll simply plug in there or power coming in going to plug in like that daisy chain off to the next power point so these are available in a variety of lengths anywhere from one to six meters you work out 
how far it is from this power point to the next power point, whatever length cable you might need, and that's what you order. Uh, they're all pre-made. They're not something you pull apart and change. Um, so that's the CMS power points. So, um, and I've pre-wired CMS cabling into my breakout box. So we've got a shore power in connection and a main power out to our power point. The other thing you'll need to look at on my breakout box is a main earth. So the main earth, that needs to be fitted off to the bus body, bus chassis, somewhere metal like that for a good earth bond. We've got solar cable connectors here. I've already uh, connected up a set of test panels uh, plugged in there. What else have we got? Main battery connections coming off of the um, breakout box here. So in this case, we're using Pylon Tech batteries. They use these Shorelock connectors. They're pretty nifty. If you have a look, they've got a little release pin there. So after you plug them in, if you need to get them off, press the little release pin and they'll pop out. I'll show you how that works. Um, we've got a lead here coming out of the bottom of the box for 12 volts. This is going to go to your LED lights, water pumps, that sort of stuff. So that's feeding from the 48 to 12 volt converter that's inside. The other lead that I've got here says BAT battery, what looks like a uh, regular computer type patch lead. That's going to go to the battery communication so that that can talk with the, uh, the uh, Servo GX. So it talks to the batteries to get battery state of charge, all that sort of info with these Pylon Tech batteries. Alright, so let's, um, let's go through the process of plugging this thing in, setting it up. So you've mounted your inverter and the breakout box to one of your bins in the in your bus. I've got my test rig set up here, obviously already mounted. I've got my batteries already mounted in my uh, in my cabinets here, so you'll mount your batteries up how they're going to be. You take the leads, and you've got obviously a red and a black, positive and negative. We've got, in my case, I've got two batteries here. Eventually, the customer's going to have four. But I'll show you how we pair these up. So we're going to do them um, in banks. And so the negative from one battery to negative of the next. If you had another battery, a third and a fourth, you'd have another one of these little jumper leads. We'd go from here up to the next battery and work your way up, so on and so forth. So we're going to do those. That's the positive and the negative. You heard the little click there. You know that they're in solid then. They won't come out. If you do need to change it, you press the little button, give it a wriggle, a bit harder than these short leads, there you go. Now, for the main battery connections, what we want to do is we want to take the negative off one battery and the positive off the bottom battery. So if you've got four, then you'll go to the very top and the very bottom. So in my case, obviously we just got the two. So we're going to choose the negative, doesn't matter which way, negative on the top, positive on the bottom. In this case, you can go either way. It doesn't really matter. So that's the, the, the 48 volt connection. The other thing we've got to do is connect some communications between these guys. Uh, your batteries come with these jumpers and with a little um, communications jumper. From the bottom battery, work your way up from bottom to top away. So you're going to come off the top link port connector, which is link port zero. I'm going to plug into there and we're going to go into link port one on the next battery up. If you had a third, again, you would have another one of these go from link port zero up to link port one. Work your way up. The top battery is always going to be the master with these Pylon Tech batteries. So we take our main battery comms cable and we plug it into the one that says CAN. That's for CAN bus communication. So plug into CAN, not into link port. It'll stay empty on the top one and you'll go into the CAN bus connection. Batteries are now connected. How quick was and easy was that? Try that with lead acid. All right, so batteries are connected into the breaker box. Everything's turned off here. I'm not going to start the batteries just yet. So battery connections are done. As I said, the solar I already happen to have plugged in. So the solar panels are already connected. I want to get my touchscreen connected. So let's do that real quick. Pass our HDMI lead through there. And the screen simply clicks to its mounting panel. We'll bring these down to the breakout box 
and just let me find the uh, right leads here. So here's a HDMI. Plug that guy in. And a USB. So there we are. Just put those behind out the way. So we've now got our screen connected, batteries connected, everything here is pre-wired, pre-wired. So we could, in fact, turn this on now if we wished. But let's have a look at the uh, 240 wiring first. Let's get that done. So we've got our shore power is going to go in here, and I've got two power points for demo purposes today. So I've got my shore power CMS shore power connector. Looks just like most other shore power plugs that you'd buy except it's got their proprietary connector on the back. So we plug that into the lead that we've already uh, pre-run through our bus. Push that in until it clicks, and uh, let's even screw it up to make it look professional. So there we are, shore power plug mounted to the outside of the bus or inside one of the bins, wherever you want it. Here's the shore power lead that was connected in the back. That's going to come across to the breakout box. Find your shore power in, which is going to be the one with the prongs that you can see. You can't get it wrong anyway. That clicks together. We've now got shore power connected to the safety switch. We've got power out, and here's the lead I've pre-wired through, that's going to plug together, click again. So that's now, that's this cable here coming up to our first power point. So here's our double power point, we can see we've got power coming in and power coming out to the next power point. So let's plug that in, power in, loop off to the next power point. And uh, so in this case we've got a flush mount power point. So it's going to be flush on our uh, on our um, panel of our bus. There we are, and we can put us around on to make it look good. Over here, we've got a surface mount mounting block. So if you needed to be on the front of a bench and run the cables down, something like that, that that guy there would be ideal. We're going to put this power point in. This is a good power point. It's a single power point, but it's also got a USB connection in it. Uh, so on the back, we've got our same 240 in and out connectors, but we've also got connections here for 12 volts. Uh, so you need to run a separate 12 volt feed to get the USB working. It doesn't come off 240. So this is the end of our run. So there will be no more leads. Uh, and so that you can't, there's no touch potential. You can't touch a live wiring in the back of these, they're really good. So these are made by CMS Electricom and uh, they're actually used in Jayco caravans and Toramal as well, I believe. So we fit that guy off. And we'll put the cover on this one as well. There we are. Looking good. And so you might need a bit of trim over that, depending on how you've um, fitted that up in the bus. If you're right at a bench, you know, that wouldn't be an issue. But that'll be different site by site. How quick and easy was that? Batteries are connected. Solar panels are connected. All of our power points are now connected. We're ready to turn on. So let's do it. So what we're going to do first, switch the power on button on each battery. Not much happens, you just get a little green light. On the master battery, which is going to be the top one as I said, press the SW button. And you see a few lights flash here, batteries are starting to wake up, they'll start to talk to each other, and in just a moment we'll see state of charge. And we're around about 50 odd percent, just judging by those LED lights. So power has come as far as this main battery breaker. These will all get labelled up, by the way. I've got labels coming, um, being printed up. Just didn't get them in time for now. Um, 
So we turn on our main battery breaker. That's now delivered two, uh, 48 volts into the system. The inverter actually we can switch on. So we should see a mains on light here in just a moment. Sorry. Oops, switch the wrong way. There we are, inverter on. So inverter's now lit up. We can turn on our solar controller. You can see a flash of lights on there. We can turn on our 48 to 12 volt converter because that's also going to give us power to the Servo GX. So we should see the touchscreen light up before too much longer. And then we can proceed to switch on our solar panel. Lastly, we'll turn on our safety switches for the 240 volt connection. So shore power is going to be on this first one. The second one goes to all our power points. The third one in this case is not going to do anything because that'll go to the customer's um, aircon. That'll get hardwired later. So we might have to wait a few minutes for the, uh, here we are, touchscreen starting. So the servo's booting up. It'll start communicating with the inverter, the charge controller and the batteries. And here we are. So we've got Already we've got about 130 watts of charge. Batteries are at 56%. No loads. Hasn't quite got communications happening with the uh, inverter just yet. So if we we'll wait a moment, that should say the word inverting. We'll just let that go for a minute. You can see the screen given a flicker there. That's due to this USB extension being just a touch too long. So I need to uh, make changes before I send that away. All right, so that's good. We're, we're talking, we're communicating here now. First thing I want to do is check my safety switches. Both of those work. This one won't because obviously it's shore power input. Unless we had something plugged in there, it's never going to trip. So power's back on. And uh, let's try a load. So I've got to plug in my heat gun. It's always good for testing systems. It gives a good amount of load and it's variable. So I'm going to wind it back to the minimum. Switch it on. And at the moment, about 250 watts. If I crank that up, we see now about 800 odd watts. You can see here, we're pulling 20 amps off the batteries. This is where 48 volt systems are so good. We've got nearly 1,000 watts and we're only pulling 20 amps off the batteries, which is great. Um, 100 watts coming off the solar because there's not much sun and I've only got a couple of panels using for test. If I go to full, should reach nearly 2,000 watts. There we are, 1,800. So we're going full heat on the heat gun. The inverter not even making a sound. No fans are kicked in. It's only half load, to be honest. So that's good. The other thing we'll test, and this can't be wrong because it's all pre-wired CMS stuff, is... This little device here gives me RCD tripping and also polarity check. So we can see these two lights are on, which is good. Tells me that active and neutral are the correct way around. Test button, we've just tripped our safety switch. So we know that side of it's working as well. Let's do it again on the, the last power point here, just to make sure they're all doing what they should do. Wired correctly, tripping as it should. Uh, if I had a shore power connection handy, we would see some um, shore power input come in here. We'd see how many watts load that we're drawing from uh, from the grid or from your generator. That can be configured in the in the touchscreen settings. You can go in and tell the uh, MultiPlus how many amps you want to actually draw as a maximum off your generator, so that way you don't overload it. Um, and I think that's about it. I think we've covered everything. So there we are in short space of time we've gone from no power to everything powered up power points are fitted off and running batteries are up and going the other thing I'll take you through now is a shutdown process just so you know how to shut the thing down if ever you need to always turn off your loads and your charges first so we're going to turn off our loads which is 240 volt we'll turn off our 48 to 12 volt converter to get rid of any 12 volt loads next we're going to turn off our solar panels then we'll turn off the charge controller. We'll switch off the inverter on its switch underneath. 
and then we can turn off the battery breaker. So now our bus is dead, Power batteries are still turned on. All we simply do now, switch off, switch off. System's now shut down and safe. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.